Welcome back to the second part of Module 10, Lesson 7, where we're going to continue our study into histograms. Now, we're going to pick up where we left off yesterday with this histogram right here, and we're going to take and sox it. Remember when we soxed earlier in the module? Well, that's what we're going to do. We created this foldable, and this is what we're going to be using. We're going to start off by looking at the shape. And under the shape, we say, it says when data is graphed, what is the shape of the data display? Is it symmetric? Mm, more or less, yeah, it really is. Is it skewed? Uh, a little bit skewed, kind of not really. No, I wouldn't say it's skewed at all. I'm just saying it's totally symmetric. Is it uniform? It is not uniform because uniform means they're all the same exact level. And is it unimodal? bimodal or multimodal well this one's unimodal because it has one peak on it next we're going to look at the o which is for outliers and on unus other unusual features it says what are the unusual features that stand out from the rest of the graph first we're going to look at clusters and my cluster is going to be that 54 to 60 where the majority of the data is you could even argue that the majority of the data kind of is between the 48 and the 66 that is a perfect little bell curve almost where it shows how the most of the people are in that middle section gaps there are no gaps and then outliers there's not any outliers here either next one c for center and in the center, we say, what is the mean and the median? Well, we're not going to actually calculate that, but I'm going to bet you the mean and the median both are going to occur about 54 years of age, and between 54 and 60, I should say. And we talked about the median yesterday when we went over that. And finally, the last one, S, is going to be the spread. And for the spread... It wants to know what's the range. Well, the range is going to be 72 minus 42, which is a 30-year range. The interquartile range, we're not doing that. And the mean absolute deviation, we're definitely not doing that. So we're only worried about that mathematical range. Now, we're going to do the same thing for this question right here. This histogram shows the distribution of the length of shoes for 17 third grade students. And you can see in centimeters, they range from 14 centimeters centimeters all the way up to 26 centimeters that's a pretty big spread okay first question is what is the shape of the dis distribution well shape gives us some choices first one is is it symmetric it's definitely not symmetric is it skewed i'm gonna say yeah it's definitely skewed the majority of your data is clumped over here but you're gonna have it skewed left because you got this handful of people with little bitty tiny feet we call them i don't know miniature people or something is it uniform definitely not uniform uniform means they're all the same level and is it unimodal or bimodal I would really say unimodal because it has one real peak here. It's got a teeny tiny little peak looking thing there, but I don't think that's enough to justify it being called a bimodal. Next question is what is the expected relationship between the mean and the median? And my expected relationship here is going to be that the mean is going to be lower than the median because you have these handful of really low numbers that are going to pull that mean to the left hand side, pull it down. Meanwhile, the majority of the data values are up here in these bigger numbers, meaning the median itself, your middle value, that's going to be somewhere around probably the 20 to 22 range. Next thing here we have it, it, to it says the exact value of the median cannot be determined from the graph in which bin is it going to be located is the median located explain the process and use for determining your answer well it says that we can't get the exact value but we can say that it occurs in a certain bin so what i can do here is i can start once again working to my middle and let's see if i can get my pen to work and there we go 
So we're going to start working to the middle. So I've got two here, and I've got this is three. So I, I've gotten three taken out there, and then that's two plus one is three. So let's get a, some stronger colors for that one so you can see it right there. There's my one is three. And then we're going to keep working to the middle. So next thing, I'm going to take one out of this one, and I'm going to take one out of that one, which is going to take it down to five. And then, ooh, I was wrong about where the middle was going to be. Because from there, I have four and four. So I'm going to take out, coming from the left, one, two, three, and four. And then I'm going to take out here, one. Actually, it would end up being more like one, two, three, and four. So my middle value is going to be somewhere in this section here, which is actually going to land in bin 22 through 24. I believe, is that the last question we have? That is the last question. This is a really short video, but guys, it is going to be a long day because you now are going to be divided into groups and you're going to be working on this data. Wow, that's just kind of scary. Look at all those glorious numbers. And in your group, you're going to be taking, answering questions on page one there. You're going to have more data where you're going to be creating a tally sheet and you're going to be creating a histogram on page two. And you got more questions to answer on page three. So you got a total of three pages to work. Anything not done in class will be homework. So make sure you and your team are working hard and consistent to get it done as much done in class as you can so you don't have a lot of homework. Also, things like this statement here that says justify your answer, that means you got to use a real sentence. Real good sentence, maybe more than one sentence in order to explain how you got your answer. Good luck. I look forward to seeing what you come up tonight when I'm grading your work and I will see you in class tomorrow.